These interviews in no way reflect the views of Arrayus Productions. This project is in no way endorsed by Arrayus Productions. As students in a continuous state of learning and frequency accretion, we each hold our own unique perspective of the teachings and how they relate to our individual experiences. It is important for viewers to remember that we are in fact self-sovereign beings with free will expression and we each carry our own perceptual filters with potential for distortion. These interviews are intended to inspire and in no way should reflect upon Iesha, Arrayus Productions, or any of her work as there is no affiliation. More information on the Alhumbra Magistracy Council of Cosmenias, the Melchizedek Cloister Emerald Order, Tantriora, Tantriasia, and the Kelantic Science can be found in the provided links below. Plasma frequency, I feel like jello, like it's all wobbly, kind of. <laughs> There's a lot of frequency. Yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. You know, when I was doing my meditation, uh, I, I saw suddenly this, like, I still kind of see it, like my whole room is surrounded with this uh, pink plasma. So, yeah, I get this heat wave now. You could feel it before? Yes, a lot. I don't know if you did. Yeah, my actually my hands and my arms started getting kind of wobbly as I was moving the mouse. That's never really happened. Like I'm really jittery. <laughs> yeah, I felt that too. Maybe because I was charging my hands with the plasma. Okay, that's probably why. <laughs>
Okay, well, we'll go ahead and start. Olivia, thank you for joining us. This is um, kind of unexpected. Like, I, it started with just hearing all kinds of really good stuff about your sessions and what you do, and um, just a real greeting into the community here from people, you know, and, and just people messaging me. I think we talked like way back in January, and you were just coming into Katie Dale's and putting together the plasmas and stuff, but I'll let you go ahead and start. Just give us a, a little bit of a background of how you came into KS and what you were doing before, maybe where you're from and stuff like that. All right. So, hi, everybody. Thank you for uh, listening to the KS Reality Talks. Uh, well, my name uh, given to my birth is Olivia, but basically my soul, uh, soul essence name is Ezeana. I was born in Poland. And I'm basically pure Polish. Um, and that's basically where I have lived for all my life, uh, on the south of Poland, in the Carpat Mountains. Um, this place has always felt like home, and it, and it really has a wonderful frequency where I always enjoy going out to nature, um, going by the river, um, discovering new places, because uh, the, the energy here is magical and I have always felt like I have been here before. And I have always been wondering about this uh, strange feeling that was uh, popping in when I was um, taking a walk in the mountains nearby. Um, basically, ever since I was born, I, ha I had a lot of visions, flashbacks, insights that didn't really fit into this uh, traditional worlds, let's say. Uh, as a child, I would just lay on my bed and wonder, like, why I'm here? What is my purpose? Um, who am I actually? And what am I doing here? And it was very hard uh, for me for a very long time to actually find answers that would make sense to me. Um, I was feeling quite overwhelmed with uh, me having a lot of, like, uh, questions about my whole uh, while having to study, um, just kind of be grounded in this reality, while um, I was having so many questions and not really much, and not really a lot of answers. Um, when I started slowly to get into spirituality, because I was struggling with a lot of um, health issues, um, basically the headaches were the worst uh, of them. And I was looking for some solutions because nobody could really diagnose me, what's happening to me, what's wrong with me. So I started to dig in into spirituality. And actually the first video well, uh, that I was watching, uh, it was a guy who was, um, he was like a guest on some kind of a YouTube channel that I came across. And he mentioned the term, the host of Amenti. And when I heard the term Amenti, I was like, wow, just the frequency itself of that name was just like something in my chest. Uh, like now I know it's a heart chakra, kind of awakened. And I started and I found out about Ashayana, the Voyager's books and the Guardians. And that's how I started to keep going with it. How long ago was that? That was over three years ago. Three years. Okay. And that was like your first... Would you call that like a spiritual awakening type thing or your first modality? Were you doing any other healing type things or spiritual practices? Yes, actually, that was my first, um, let's say, like come across uh, when it comes to the spirituality, because um, before that I was very grounded. Like I have always had a very good intuition about people, but I was more thinking about um finding myself in this matrix. Basically, um, when I came across this material, I was still in high school. So I was thinking like, yeah, I need to get good marks. I need to study. I need to basically do something for a living. But it all changed when I came across uh, the teachings. And that was during the COVID, actually. So um, being in a lockdown actually gave me a lot of time to start discovering it. And um, I had no idea uh, really about um, different uh, healing modalities before. I was raised in a pretty much of an open-minded family, but we were more about knowing that this world is something more than that. 
but I still felt like it's not enough for me. So when I started to come across the information from the guardians, it was like this, um, this missing pieces that I have always seen, they started to complete. Right. You mentioned that your family, was it, would you say like traditional or did, were you raised in a religious atmosphere or anything? I was raised, um, no, I was actually raised in a very open-minded family. Um, basically, uh, it started with us being vegetarians, uh, being aware of what's healthy, what's not. And when I was five, I started to like being completely vegetarian. My brother has been a vegetarian ever since the moment when he was born. And um, my family basically started to be more open-minded about the world conspiracies. Uh, they were aware of the um, of how this world is being perfectly controlled. Um, I remember that when I was 12 years old, I would read uh, the book of the David, David Icke called The Biggest Secret. Yes. And that blew my mind that there could be aliens, um, that there are so many secret societies. Like I couldn't sleep for a few nights. <laughs> <laughs> because um, the, the, the information was just crazy to me, but it really opened my mind. Um, the reptilians. But when it comes to, yes, yes, that chapter, when I read it, I was like, I'm afraid, really. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but we all were. <laughs> that's what it is. Uh, when we come across this shocking information, we are at, at first, we are kind of getting into this, like, you know, this moment when we are afraid. But then we start to kind of accept this information and move forward. So it was this way for me. So yes, we have been always open-minded, looking at the world from a bit of a different perspective. Um, I live in a very small village um, and everyone is kind of a Christian here. We never have been. Um, I was baptized, but only because we kind of did it because of the family and all of that. Um, that's, by the way, a very interesting thing to mention when we're talking about the religions. Um, each religion, all of these um, things, such as the baptism um, or confession, this is basically blocking our chakras a lot. I'm seeing that when I heal people, uh, they have these seals on their chakras um, when they are um, being baptized or um, having all of these different kinds of ceremonials. Um, I do believe that all of these ceremonials used to be, you know, sacred, just like we had one religion, which was truly sacred. But it all got eventually distorted. And um, now the religions are really doing uh, a lot of harm when it comes to our energetic systems. And that's also one of the things I have always been paying attention to ever since I started working, because I do feel like um, it was the baptism which actually... Um, shut down my third eye chakra for a few years. Wow. Do you see a lot of people kind of waking up out of religion, like in your local area and also worldwide? Definitely. Um, mostly because people kind of start to, um, they start to see that there are some missing pieces in every religion, that it's not, it cannot be the way it is said in Quran or the Bible. Um, they kind of feel like it's not the full story. It's not, it doesn't fit to the rules anymore. So um, I see people awakening and in Poland, especially it's visible because of this, um, um, many, many priests are being accused of doing a lot of harm to the children. Um, this is, there are so many controversies, uh, controversies like right now in Poland when it comes to that. So yeah, many people, stop going to the church and they start to be open-minded so so it's wonderful to see it in this like manifesting in this hologram yeah i was surprised to see how much disclosure happened on mainstream news like with the churches mainly the catholic church i guess disclosure with the priests and yes it has been spoken a lot in poland because we are like almost like 90 percent of people here are catholics so, yeah. um, you know, these um, older people who are a lot into religion, they just couldn't accept that. It, it was very hard for them to process. For younger people, it's a bit easier because um, young people don't really go to the church anymore. I would say it's mainly because of the laziness, but also to the fact that um, I feel like this younger society starts to break the rules. 
that's a good thing. But at the same time, they don't know what path they want to follow. So we are also like um, a big part of this society doesn't know which way, which path they want to follow. But it could be also a good thing because they will start to look for different kinds of solutions to actually find off. They'll, they'll look for solutions for what? It broke up a little. I would say that they will uh, try to find solutions because I... I do believe that um, humans have something like that. They need to believe in something. They need to have faith. And if religion is failing, there could be science, which in my opinion is a pretty big religion. Yes. Um, but, they, but, they will, uh, but they will be looking for something which is going to give their life a purpose. And that could be the KS. This could be any kind of uh, a spirituality which is Christic. So when you said you heard the word amity and it sounds like some, almost like a memory or something, just something that affected you, familiarity. So it how, opened something. Mm -hmm. How far uh, did you go into this? Like, because it was on a YouTube video, did you go right into like doing techniques? Did you study the histories? Where did you go after that? So after hearing the word amenti, I started, like I had this vision of myself like, Walking on this um, path, it was like made of crystals and there was like a big portal opening up in front of me and I'm going through this portal and it felt like a memory actually. So I uh, googled Ashayana and found the Voyager's books and um, I actually found them online at first and it actually took me a month to get back to them because there were many kind of blockages in me that... I wanted to follow that. I wanted to know the truth. But at the same time, I wasn't sure if my mind is capable of, of opening to that. So it was like a month of break and like thinking about that word all, all over again. Mm. Until one day, actually, it was like a New Year resolution, actually, <laughs> that um, I'm going to start getting into that. So the first book I have read was The Angelic Realities. And it has already answered my first question, like, what this universe is like? I mean, what is the reality of that? I mean, this 15-dimensional universe, the time matrices, that already answered one of my biggest questions that I have ever had. And um, then I started practicing a bit of the Maharik seal. I had no idea about the plasma uh, techniques at that time. I was mostly, like, um, focused on reading the books. Right. And I didn't even know that there were workshops, so that, that was a bit later. So I started practicing that Maharik seal. Things slowly started to get better for me when it comes to the health. And surprisingly, I kind of started to slowly feel the frequencies, but yet something was blocked. So that was basically the beginning when I started to get into this information, reading the Voyagers, um, challenging myself with this crazy... Um, physics that was there but at the same time it made so much sense to me because i think that um the no like this knowledge is so vast and we sometimes don't need to focus so much on the details but more on feeling this knowledge and seeing how it resonates with us because whenever i was holding this book in my hand after like buying it i was just feeling peaceful i felt peace and that i'm i'm home and that was actually the first time I was feeling this way. I think this is really interesting that you started with the Maharik Shield because this is a really big topic right now with people coming in. Is it safe to do the Maharik Shield? So I want to ask you directly, what experiences did, did you ever feel unsafe doing it? What frequencies did you experience with it? Okay, so um, when I started, it actually felt good to me. Like this was the kind of frequency that started to do some kind of shifts in my body. But later on, when I raised my frequency to a higher level, it kind of started to feel uncomfortable, as if something opened up in my template and I needed different frequencies. So that's when I kind of resigned from the Maharik seal and started doing the wind of breath for like 15 minutes uh, daily. Wind and of the breath? it was a lot better. Mm -hmm. That latest plasma technique, the wind of the breath, 
the luminaire breathing? Yes, exactly. These two pillars. Uh, I was like doing that every day for like 15 minutes, then like extended it to 30. And then I had this period of breathing it like for one, uh, one hour daily. So I, I was like feeling like my body really needs that frequency, like it's thirsty of something very, very um, intense. But what I actually think about the light body techniques when we're talking about it, it really depends on the on the template that you have because yes. I know some people uh, because basically the way I'm working on the sessions with people I assist with healing certain distortions that they have and then I recommend them the techniques what they should be trying and I usually recommend them mostly the plasmas because I know that they work like in a good way for everyone but when it comes to the light body Certain souls with certain DNA templates, uh, this could put them into um, attempts of infiltration. Um, I had some people telling me that they didn't feel okay after doing the Maharic seal or the flame body. But there are also ones which kind of feel good after it. I was doing um, last year the whole flame body activation and it felt quite good. But like when, the, when I did, of course, like I amplified my plasma field before that um, but it didn't feel as powerful as the plasmas this is just like you know it's the frequency from the internal creation this is something much more powerful than just the maharic frequencies i think it's really good that you're saying this because it is very unique to the individual's template and what they need at any given time i've even seen some people that came in and they tried doing the plasmas and it was almost like blaring in their face, like too much frequency, too much light. And they had to go back and do the older techniques to ground the plasmas. Have you seen that before? Yes. I mean, um, some people cannot fully do one technique uh, because it's getting difficult for them. Um, I mean, I had one person who was actually trying to do the uh, flame body techniques first but she couldn't. Then she tried to do the plasmas, but she had to like repeat it very slowly. Like you have these free techniques on the Areas website. And she basically had to do the Crystar Seed Atom a few times before she did the, uh, the journey to the Areas mm -hmm. Island. So she had to like make sure that she's really like slowly embodying the frequencies because she was infiltrated on a lot of levels. So I was working with her for a few months uh, before she was actually like able to do the KDDLs she started with uh, like earlier plasma techniques like these ones, uh, like the chismatic ones. And then she was just going from one workshop to another uh, because she actually needed more time to uh, embody these uh, true flows from the KDDLs because they are very powerful. Um, I had this experience with myself when I was first doing the activations of the ice and fire plasma that there's this moment where Ashayana says that um, if you start to feel uncomfortable, you should stop. And I, I kind of did. I mean, I started to have this kind of like a paranoia, like I started laughing and crying at the same time, but I didn't stop because this was so purifying that actually I was feeling so much better because I felt like something has released in me. So um, there are many kinds of deep experiences that I was having with these meditations uh, because they are like the keys. They, you're receiving the keys. These techniques give you the keys to opening certain things in your anatomy, which is making you more and more powerful and uh, gives you this kind of freedom in your own body. It definitely becomes a very unique journey for when it comes to techniques of what people need to do and just kind of fill it out. I, I'm like how you are with people. I give them the same advice just to not close off any section of the work or any technique because, like you say, the capacity of the individual's template and what they need is something that they're going to need to fill out for themselves eventually. But I think that it's great that there's people like you that assist people to fill it out because that's, that's exactly what we need right now. It's like a supply and demand type exactly. thing. It's a lot of people. Exactly. Besides, I really value the freedom teachings. Um, 
like the Tantri Ahura teachings are wonderful as well, but uh, this knowledge from the freedom teachings gives this amazing basis for you to actually get this context of how uh, multidimensional our anatomy is. When I was doing this uh, Katara healing course, because that's actually how my journey as a healer started. Uh, I don't really like to use the term healer because it could remind of people doing like miracles and, you know, just um, it doesn't bring um, good uh, things to the mind right. for some. But when I started doing this uh, Katara healing course, I kind of have this um, month that was two years ago in May. I totally don't remember what was happening then. It's like a blank month <laughs> when it comes to memory. And then I was able to heal. I only remember I was studying the Katara at that time. So um, it gives you a great context when it comes to learning uh, about your body, about the subtle anatomy, about the body layers. Uh, it's very useful. You don't necessarily have to do the techniques, you know, if you're afraid of doing the Maharik seal and stuff. But it really gives a great basis for you to understand how your anatomy works. It's actually like, I think, one of the earliest workshops, but it's just, it's priceless when it comes to the knowledge. And also uh, the mentor technique. Um, I would say that even though it's a light body technique, it's the one which is working just perfectly. Right. Uh, I was doing it for like over three months, constantly each day. And it actually really opened up that third eye. So it works. Yeah, and you mentioned Cathara. So how far did you go into it? Was this just Cathara 1? And did you actually practice on yourself with the Cathara centers and Cathara points? Yes, um, I was practicing with myself and with my family members as well when it comes to the Katara sessions. Oh, that's fine. Um, yes. Um, and then I actually came up with the thing where I kind of think about that like, the Katara grit is important when it comes to healing it. But it, I kind of, this Doradic current, it's a light current, so it doesn't resonate with me anymore. I had this mindset a few months ago when I was contemplating over what to do with the Katara grit because I kind of felt like it's wise to stop with doing this, um, just the Katara healing sessions, you know, where you just uh, clean, clean uh, the Katara grit. But I just felt like there is something else that you need to do with the Katara grid. So I was given this method by the guardians where you're actually using the illuminar frequencies to clear the Katara grid out of the distortions. Wow. And at the same time, it's creating this link between the Katara grid in your light body and the Katara grid, which is in the plasma body. Because yes. Ayana, she mentioned it just like in one sentence, I think, in the... KDDL2, that they're like the Katara grid is also on the internal creation level. So you're creating this link with using the illuminar frequency to clear the Katara grid centers. Yeah, do you know Magdalena? She's in your country, in Poland? Um, I don't think so. Okay. I mean, I, I think I saw her profile, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, she's done a lot of uh, light language art. And also a lot of work with the plasmas and the plasma frequencies and doing summaries on them and posting to the groups. So I had made a chart showing the location of the crystals of the plasma plasma body anatomy. And it's almost, it, it looks like a template. It looks like our plasma body template. And that was from the seed atom journey. I don't know if you've seen that, but I was working on overlaying that onto the cathara grid and just having like light body plasma body and seeing where those points are close to, you know, and maybe in the future, they'll, Arrhaeus is going to do that, like make routes of connection to both templates. Definitely. I mean, uh, this is so essential when it comes to uh, clearing our anatomy. We kind of have to work with the Katara grid because it also under helps us understand the karmic imprints what they are, uh, why certain situations are manifesting in our lives. So, uh, so this is something uh, very useful, I would say, because it makes us realize uh, why our life is the way it is and what we can do actually to change it. So have you worked with the latest KDDL3 also, like the eight breath that we recently did? And what was your experience yes. with that? Because that was actually... It was like 
weaving together light body and plasma body. It's a pretty incredible technique. Yes, I have done this technique uh, twice already, and I'm doing this eight uh, foil flicker flames uh, daily, actually. There is something really magical about that one, uh, because um, when I'm sending these foil sparks to different chakras, I really feel that clearing and that sense that there is this kind of, um, especially when I do it to this Trantian window in the chakra 14, that there is this frequency coming to different body layers at the same time. And it's like when I'm doing this technique, after that I feel like my true body and my physical body are in perfect synchronization. So it's a wonderful one. And I do feel like uh, when Ashayana comes up again, we will mainly focus on um, integrating the Kilontic ex external creation body uh, with this plasma internal creation body, because I do really feel like it's important. And also the urea body, that's, that's another fascinating topic. And I'm, I'm also like uh, starting to do the projections in that, in that one. And it's mind blowing, honestly. I think it's incredible that I think she actually mentioned in the last update that all of the older light body, crystal body, anatomy techniques are going to come back online, like for us to do. Like we're going to need to start doing that, of course, with the protection after the trumpets and the Metatronic seed atom snap off and everything. What's been your experience with that the Chevrolet? That would be very exciting, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm looking Can forward you say to that it. Again? I'm really looking forward to it because that's when I came in was doing those techniques. So they mean a lot to me. It was really life changing. Flame body, Cathara 2 3, crystal body anatomy. So I'm, I'm just really, I'm ready to do them again, but also like in unison with the, the ending of these trumpets and everything in our chevrons. What's, what's been your experience with the, the, the recent chevrons? Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the, the crystal body was also a wonderful one. I felt like this, um, the, uh, the lotus breathing, that was like another uh, great technique. I really like these different types of breaths that Ashayana is intros introducing, especially like also this um, breath of the eternal ancient eyes. That's another great one. Uh, I really do feel like, uh, because um, I was feeling that chevron frequency like for over past two weeks, I would say. And I felt like it really started clearing a lot. Like it has been making my head a lot more, um, I would say, um, in harmony. Uh, it was bringing a lot of positivity into my mind and it was making me very creative. So I feel like this frequency is going to actually keep inspiring us, um, kind of synchronizing us even more with the planet. So. Um, I actually have uh, had this calling lately to, to do some even more projections in my plasma body to keep catching these frequencies uh, and even spreading them into my sessions, even though I noticed that quite a few people are um, catching this uh, chevron. So, yeah, we are, we are having like an amazing time. And today is like the first day of the Hitaro of the electric peak. So I feel like there is so much going on with the planetary grids right now. Uh, but it's definitely the change for the positive. A lot of people in the Telegram group said that they noticed fatigue. And just I, I look at that as like just frequency saturation, kind of like at the workshops where she said people would fall asleep, where it's just like hitting density one yeah. so much that it's affecting your physical anatomy to where it's, it, it's don't want to say overload but you're just like saturated in it and you have to process it and just breathe it through yes uh i was talking to quite a few people uh lately about the what the way they are feeling and i noticed that this the most common let's say symptoms of the chevron um these are like troubles with the digestive system with the liver with the intestines i was feeling that with the intestines especially so it was some kind of a clearing out there um, the feeling of either being too tired or too energized uh, and a bit of a mood swings. So this is like a very intense clearing frequency. And if some people aren't quite ready for it, they might feel it a bit negatively or 
being very tired because our body kind of turns off when we're having these high frequencies. But I feel like for those who are actually um, consciously uh, working with the frequency, it could actually really, really uh, speed up the accretion cycle in their bodies. I was making excerpts on the encryption lattice because uh, I think that that's um, something that becomes important to be aware of when you're clearing. And just before the chevrons, when I was posting these excerpts to kind of assist with people that may experience some level of clearings from the from the chevrons. Have you studied that much on the encryption lattice? Like in sliders, have you gone into sliders that much? I have gotten into first three parts of the sliders. Um, I was very much focused on getting into gr this grail state and mastering that, but like the next parts of the sliders are definitely in my plans. Um, but yeah, these first three parts of the sliders, I don't think that the encryption lattice was mentioned in those ones. And also, you mentioned digestion, so the solar plexus, that seems to be something yeah. that's really important, like to clear that out. The BST Banshee from the Aruba workshop, that's... Uh, Definitely. Yeah. Uh, you know what I have experienced, because I'm working with these Aruba techniques quite on a regular basis with this C3 command, and also with uh, getting different kinds of uh, uh, like frequencies which were uh, on that workshop. And when and there is this one really quick quick thing that Ashayana has shared that like you're inhaling into the solar plexus or more like this blood crystal sac and you're doing this two point inhale I don't know if you remember that and you're like disattaching these cords connected to e to each other and um, this is clearing these marketer fields uh, so basically um, I have felt like doing this quite uh, often lately. So I really feel like it's working. Was that the Austriana sac, which is like it is the blood crystal sac later on? It's yes, yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is also that was the seed atom journey, one of the locations of the plasma, like crystals of the of the template. So we had like the wing spots exactly. and the blood crystal mm -hmm. sac. Yeah, so it's almost like some of it's just coming online, forming a new cathargor, like she said, kind of into internal creation we'll discover like these yes. points in our anatomy. I mean, that seed atom journey was like a very deep experience. Um, I'm sure that it has been for many because I feel like it's one of these key journeys that everyone must do uh, at least once. Uh, but I feel like it's good to repeat it actually uh, quite often. Uh, however, yeah, when uh, it, it kind of felt like, because that was actually the first journey I have ever had in my plasma body. Even though I had felt like it was already active, um, and the visuals were like just amazing, and when I was like right at the core of um, of that seed atom, I really felt like this wonderful connection to the whole universe. Uh, that like there really is this Christ star from which we all came from, and that we are all connected to it. So um, I just felt this incredible feeling of this connection, of this joy. And um, that was actually the beginning of me and my wo conscious work with the Alhumbras. Um, so yeah, the, the, this Chrysler Seed Atom journey was just uh, wonderful. So I recommend it to everyone who hasn't done it yet. And yeah, I really felt these crystals in my sack when I was... Um, when when I put them and then when you have the second part of the technique which is not on the website but it's also like available if you get the workshop where you actually place these crystals in different places uh, yes. in your body I don't exactly remember the locations anymore but I'm sure the one was also like one of them was on the wing spot that was a major shift uh, like in the physical body uh, and my mom had this as well because she's also doing the techniques along with me. Oh wow! And we both had like we both had a very intense headache the next day, um, but we felt like something is transforming out there. So I was just like checking us, like seeing with my fair eye if everything is going there, uh, all right. But yeah, it was just the process that we had to go through, and then we were just feeling just fine. It's always incredible to see people just come in, like yourself, where things just click, and it's almost like they were just 
it, it's it's the divine timing thing. You just come in and the codes click on, and you know that there's something going on there. You know that they're keyed into what this work is about and just makes perfect sense for them it's amazing you know uh, for me learning this work was just like reminding it uh, for me it was as if i knew this knowledge because each each time i was like reading a chapter either from the voyagers book or then i was doing this master's templar stewardship manual i was like at the at first i was very much into history history into atlantis and um, the memories from Atlantis were the first memories from my previous lives which showed up about me actually being um, being an exorcist there, uh, wow. helping, assisting with removing these uh, negative entities, negative forces which started to show up there. And I was actually like a teacher there, learning uh, others how to do that. Uh, so these were like very intense experiences. And... Um, the first kind of memories that started to came back. Um, then I actually realized I was one of those who were actually teaching this knowledge on the Middle East when we were trying to introduce, let's say, like the basis of the Islam religion, even though it's not the way it is right now, but like the original teachings. But it ended pretty badly for me at that time. But yeah, I was I was always working with this knowledge, working with the planetary grids. Um, I also have this um, these memories from this um, how was this event called? Uh, the fall of Brenoi, yeah. where we were um, trying to send the right frequencies um, to the gates during the Rainbow Run tables, but unfortunately, they kind of uh, made the plans um, quite difficult to accomplish. Uh, so yeah, a lot of memories with the with the teachings with other angelic humans that were um, that were working with that. Uh, I also remember myself working with uh, King Arthur. So yeah, there's there's just so much. And whenever I was reading um, when I was reading the Voyagers, especially these memories from my previous lives kept coming back. So it was like kind of reading the diary that I used to write a long time ago. You mentioned your mother, which I think this is beautiful that both of you are doing this. So this kind of goes into the ancestral coding, your 3D family lineages, and linking that to your cosmic lineage. What have you discovered with this? So um, when it comes to my 3D lineage, I would say that I'm Polish, but I kind of feel very much related to, um, to more of the Western uh, countries, such as Spain, and um, and um, and France actually, but maybe that's also because of my <laughs> dark hair. However, when it comes to my cosmic lineage, um, at first it was like I was uh, feeling very much thinking that I'm a star seed, but at the same time I was feeling like I'm kind of more than just some kind of a star seed from a different planet. And uh, that awakening has come when I discovered my uh, soul contract shortly after this seed atom journey. Um, it kind of got to me that I'm an indigo child, uh, the type 1 indigo. And um, basically, I'm mostly related to the EFIA councils. Uh, I had this wonderful awakening when I was doing the chismatic techniques uh, where um, where you're more connecting to these Elysian fields. And I realized that that's actually where it, all of it started. And uh, I got these memories uh, of me actually living um, 800 billion years on the Araya Earth and then eventually coming here, coming down here uh, to other stellar systems. So the Araya Earth is actually the place which feels like it's my real home. Um, and lately I've been working a lot with the EFIA, the EFIA time benders. Um, we've got, you know, these diff three, let's say, three groups of EFIA, the EFIA Ilesa, the EFIA Aleira, and the EFIA Area. I feel mostly like the, I feel connected to all of them, but I would say that the EFIA Aleira are, are the ones who are the most familiar to me, those ones from the Panacoleta Matrix. Um, but like coming back to the Earth lineage, uh, I remember myself being in Egypt, Atlantis, 
uh, Lemuria. Yeah, Lemuria is definitely like one of those which I remember um, very clearly uh, as working on the Easter Island with this, uh, with the energies, with the planet. Um, I was like a priest there and, and basically that was my whole life working with these wonderful frequencies. Um, I remember basically um, that I made my ascension during the second sitting when it was available to complete the full ascension to another density through the Great Pyramid in Giza. So actually I was one of those who ascended during that time, but I also decided to come back <laughs> for the third seeding to assist the humanity. And there I am actually. So yeah, that's that's mostly when it comes to my lineage. And you mentioned indigo. Do you know, have you studied the different types of indigos? Indigo one, yes. two, three? Uh, so, so I'm the type one. Type one. Emerald sun DNA, yes. Um, I remember myself as a child uh, when I was like in my garden and I suddenly started seeing with my physical eyes these colorful orbs dancing around me and I would like jump and try to catch them into my tiny hands and they were playing with me like that and that was just that's like one of the joyful the, one of the most joyful memories that I have from my childhood what color orbs? Later, mm -hmm. uh, so they were like the emerald color and the pink orbs Okay. They were kind of like uh, they were kind of like a jelly when I was touching them. I remember that I was feeling this wow. jelly. You could <laughs> feel it. Is that how you feel the plasmas now? Can you feel it that tangibly? Yes, yes. Uh, I feel it. Um, I mean, it kind of depends on the plasma, but I mostly feel it as a jelly or kind of more like a liquid. Um, and when it comes to the urea frequencies, they kind of feel like this vapor. Um, I felt so the jelly kind of, before yeah. we started, like in my room. It yes. felt like I was in a gelatin mm -hmm. pool or something. <laughs> because because I was energizing my hands with yeah. the blue, blue, pl blue pl plasma frequency and spreading it through my whole plasma body. <laughs> and it just turned blue. And and yeah, it started to I like kind of act like a jelly, you know. So yeah, um, yeah you caught that frequency. Yeah, I, I mean... I'll admit I haven't worked consciously with techniques. I'm very I'm immersed in 3D right now, just working, just go go in these projects online. That's pretty much all I've been doing, and it comes in phases for me of when I need to. Like the eight breath thing, that was definitely something I needed to do. It just unclogged something. It was something I did for a while after, but then it just it, it's like a saturation thing, you know. So whenever you come in contact with somebody that's actively doing it. It's like, oh, wow. Yeah, I remember this. <laughs> it's like, okay. It's, it's, it's a really powerful frequency, though. Yes, I mean, um, you know, for me, I would say that doing this technique is like, is like a lifestyle since I'm like, um, I made many kinds of, I would say, controversial in, in, in terms of 3D decisions that, you know, not going to college, uh, not going to university, not really continuing with my 3D education, just focusing on my sole purpose. Yeah. Uh, I kind of decided that I'm just going to fully dedicate myself to, um, to doing the techniques, to working with the frequencies, because I was once like thinking, um, are these the techniques which are kind of making me see things or... Or what is it? And I was, I kind of got this message um, that the techniques are the keys. So you could have this analogy that you're holding the keys and you've got the door, but you need to do it by yourself. You need to get the key into the door and unlock it. Right. So the techniques give you the keys, but what you're going to do after is basically up to you. Yeah. Now, would you say the the keys would also help you unlock yourself, like your own codes to where it's just on and just stays on? Yes, um, I think that the techniques are opening some kind of um, codes in your DNA, especially these one-time activations, for example, like opening the heart of a FEMA. Um, this is something which is like done and you just have it open. Even though I think that uh, what we open, it should be charged. Uh, meaning that like when you open your heart of a FEMA, there is this quick technique. Um, also, I think it's described in the same uh, technique at the end where you just charge this FEMA crystal 
and this is very powerful. So I think that um, we got the keys and we are opening certain portals in our anatomy because we could refer to our chakras as portals, as you know. So, um, so basically, I think it's about um, opening these keys, doing certain activations, but also charging your body on a regular basis. It's not like we are supposed to meditate three hours a day, but I think it's about learning how to feel your plasma body, how to feel what kind of frequencies it needs. So you just ask yourself, what kind of frequencies do I need today? And you might see a color, you might feel it. It could be, I don't know, the pink fire plasma, the blue plasma, and you just induce it into the certain parts of your anatomy which need it the most. It really personalizes it for the individual too, which makes it more real. You mentioned the Alhumbra, Alhumbra and the Alessans. Is there any distinction that you feel between those two groups, those two councils, Alhumbra and Alessa? Um, I would say that I feel a difference in their frequency. I mean, the Alhumbras are, um, they come from these eight core plasma suns. And I feel like the Elasian are kind of like this council, which is, maybe that's not the right word to use, but like governing them. Like they are like another stage of the Alhumbras. Okay. Um, I got, I started having conscious contact with the Elations after completing the chismatic techniques. Uh, I came across one of my guardians when I was on a projection to Araya Earth. And this entity just felt so familiar and it has a great sense of humor. <laughs> um, like he could literally make me laugh so much. and. Um, and I feel like the, the Elasians, they are just, uh, at least in my feeling, they are very like straight honest and um, they will always tell you the truth. So will the Alhumbras, but I feel like the Elasians are just very, very direct and there is this power frequency coming, um, coming from them. So um, I basically have quite a few guardians from, um, from the Alhumbras and from the Elasians. Um, and right now I'm mainly working with the FIA Alera. I was told that I'm basically going to uh, start kind of a new contact with uh, with the entities when the Hitaro begins and that turned out wow. to be true. So basically I'm working with the different councils. I must also mention that uh, we've got this new council, the uh, Ilania Topia Urea. Yes. Um, I was experiencing their presence mostly. They showed up as these different... Um, waveforms of the pink mist to me and um, they didn't quite say anything to me or I didn't catch that but I just felt that wonderful frequency coming from them it's just this there's so much faith and there's so much consciousness in them but like conscious in terms of um, of knowing that we are all one that we are all equal and that we are all going towards ascension so a lot of so, unity consciousness, like coming together, bringing people together. Yes. Okay. Is. Yeah, I so haven't tuned they, into mm -hmm. any of the newest councils. I, and to be honest, the reason why I ask is just to share my own experience. Like when the Alhumbra came on, I know that I had a contract with them, with the, the Skypod group that we were doing, because I was downstepping all of the techniques, and it was people from around the world gathering. And I was able to fluidly understand everything and what was happening but i didn't have the solid i guess you would say resonance with that council until the elasins came on and that's when i just kind of stopped and i think that that's that's what i carry is more of the elasins and the elasin pools i just soaked in it for like two weeks straight and I, I couldn't get enough of that frequency and i could feel the assistance that was happening in my life it was amazing so I've kind of, I haven't really gone past the Alasons. I've kind of just held my ground there just with the Alason councils. Um, so it's interesting to hear like these new councils that are coming on because I haven't worked with them at all. I just feel comfortable where I'm at, if that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, uh, when I was starting to work with the with these uh, Alasian frequencies, that was like a, a totally new thing for me, like when it comes to feeling my body, because 
there's, you know, a lot of working with this nervous system, with the tryptoplasmic nervous system. Yes. And for me, it felt like I was ready for these techniques because I had this short period of a break from doing techniques. And then I started doing the chismatic ones. And I just felt like my whole system is being rebuilt. And I actually started to awaken my photographic memory. So wow. that was like a nice thing because uh, actually I was like participating participating in some kind of a contest uh, just like after doing these techniques. And I was like, wow, I can remember things so quickly. So yeah, it, it was uh, it was a very like a huge like and like another stage of the awakening. And then it kind of carried on with the Ephias. And I'm just really hoping to feel more of the Elania, Topia, Urea, because those are also amazing beings. But at the same time, I'm currently sticking to the Ephias and just seeing what's going to come up next. I want to go back some into the subject of purge and clearing. And you had mentioned that before coming into chaos, like you had some, there was health problems, internal struggles you're dealing with different things. I'm just reading over some of the notes here. Can you, do you want to go more into that and what purging and clearing has meant for you? Yes. Uh, so basically I was suffering from headaches, which were coming up basically the moment I was opening my eyes and they just couldn't disappear. And like at first, you know, I was trying some medication just prescribed, but like I couldn't take them because they started to change my personality. So uh, I decided to drop that, and then I came up. Uh, I came across the KS, and um, yeah, I I kind of started to do these techniques, and I felt the major shifts that were starting to happen. So basically, I felt like I was being blocked. I was very blocked. And again, this like, was Maharic shield. Sorry, I just wanted to know yes, which. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, first, first it was the Maharic shield. Mm -hmm. The Maharic shield and what else was that? Um, the body. mentor. Oh, mentor, okay. The mentor and uh, different techniques from the angelic realities. So there was also this epsilon sequence there. Um, so you did experience I, some healing with these older techniques. It was definitely yes. an upgrade. Okay. I, I was actually able to do a lot with these techniques because the Maharic frequency is very, very healing. So for me, it just felt great. Um, and I started to work with those like on a daily basis, even like two or three times a day because I had a lot of free time basically. And uh, this consciousness started expanding. The third eye, which was awakened before, started to expand even more. Um, so basically the clearing for me, it meant getting rid of the things that were blocking me, that were stopping me from being fully able to to be who I am right now, to be fully aligned with myself. Because if we are living all the time with the blockages, which are causing us, for me, it wasn't just headaches. It was a lot of de depression, um, fear attacks. I was afraid to sleep, basically, and I didn't know why. And it really started to get interesting when I started to get rid of different entities from my body. Um, I had these experiences of this huge black hand going out of my of my um, head and that's when this headache stopped for good uh, then I had like different entities even like coming out of my body and then another one's trying to attack me and that's actually when my guardian contact started to appear when I started to see different kinds of entities after releasing these blockages uh, they started to teach me how I can actually um, how I can start to get rid of them how I could clear and protect the space around me, how I could close dark portals and things like that. So at first it was the work which was supposed to protect my field. And they started to teach me more of the self-healing, um, how I can induce the frequencies to clear my chakras, to clear different aspects of my body. And then I started to learn how to actually uh, help others with that. And that's exactly how it's to be done, is to clear it yourself and have a real understanding of what's happening in other, other people on that level of clearing that you've already done for yourself. So that's, yeah, that's amazing. That's a beautiful story. 
Definitely. And, you know, it feels like for me, whenever I'm healing someone, because I have these things like when I connect with other people's uh, fields, um, with their consciousness fields, I start to feel what they feel. So um, I sometimes have this moment, like I have a session in the morning and I wake up with a migraine and then I find out that my client has a migraine as well. So it's very healing, actually, because whenever I clear something in other person's field, it kind of heals a part of myself. And that's what also um, Ashayana was talking about um, in, in, in her works, that basically when we heal certain aspects of other people, we also heal ourselves. Yes. And since this time, have you had... Do you feel clear, like, if you had any other purges, anything like that, or is, or is it just complete, like, because you just feel like a hub of frequency for people and the work that you're doing, so is it, you're just kind of living it, like you're just in the frequency is what it feels like, or have you had any other clearings or purges on a personal level for yourself? I would say that the clearing happens all the time, because, um... I had these two major ones, like the one I said before. Then when I started to work with the plasmas, uh, it started to clear different layers of me that I got, like my, my personality changed a lot. It became a lot more calmer, less impulsive. Yeah. I was more aligned with myself. Um, but basically the clearing happens all the time, but it's different layers of my body working through this. So I sometimes get a pain in my back or something happening in my head or different organs of my body. But it's also my body processing different kinds of frequencies. So I kind of feel it in my physical body all the time that something is happening. Um, but it's not that intense as it used to be. I say I, I usually come up uh, with this, uh, with it like my approach is that basically I just keep on healing myself all the time. And because I'm working with different energies, I often kind of make my energetic system very exhausted. So I'm in a constant uh, work with myself, like healing, recharging, healing, recharging. Uh, so yeah, this is basically um, constant work, I would say. Right. So it, it's like a regular routine. You do the techniques daily, every day, the prayer. Uh, every day, like... Uh, when I wake up in the morning, I say the prayer. Um, basically, my routine is like the wind of the breath, the eight foy breaths, the one thing daily meditation. Um, I just can't, I, I, I just love this one. Um, it's my favorite. Uh, then like I activate my Elisa flame and I say the crystal river prayer and I activate my Christ our vehicle and the mission sphere. So this is like my routine that I do before the sessions. And even when I don't have a session, I just do it uh, because it's like, I kind of feel like that when I wake up, my plasma body is hungry. So I need <laughs> to fill it with different frequencies. Mm, and then I do it before going to sleep. So basically, this is like I do it two or three times a day. Do you remember the, like in the true body activation, you did the KDDL one? Do you remember where yes. she's saying like the body the true body kind of has a mind of its own like sometimes it'll get up and do stuff have you experienced by location to that level of like seeing yes. your body mm -hmm. yes um it happened to me a few times like um that i wake up and like i kind of don't feel it and i have to find it where it is and bring it back yeah it was getting very wild when i started to like activating it like the first time when I activated it, it's like I will, it suddenly ran to the other part of the room. I lost control over it and it started to make very fun oh face expressions God. just to make me laugh. Um, so it's literally like, another, like an energy body you can sense when it's not in your physical body. Like it's out and you feel a little more empty, like it's not yes, here. It, it doesn't wow. feel complete then. Um, I, I, some, I very often uh, do different sorts of projections because actually the knowledge which also comes to me, um, I'm taken by my guardians to the host of Cosminas and I'm learning from these records, um, different sorts of knowledge, which is then useful for me. Uh, so, I, so I usually do it through the true Abadi projection. And when I'm in that process, which usually takes like sometimes even up to a week, where a 
major part of my consciousness is out of my body, it kind of gets pretty much tough uh, for me to fully focus in this reality because a big part of me is somewhere else. So uh, it's quite a bit challenging at times, but yeah, I feel truly complete when my true body is with me. It's inspiring to work with it some more because I kind of left off with that too. I was trying to make the connection of, of the sensitivity. She says like to wiggle your foot, your hands, and like be able to tell the difference between the bodies. Something and I want to say. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would say that also doing the projections because um, when I was doing this KDDL1, I sent my true body to this um, to this healing pools. Um, on this Crystal Bridgeway uh, station. Uh, I don't remember the full name, uh, but yeah, the, on, on Median Earth. And, uh, and in these pools, I was like taking this wonderful bath. And I remember that when I came, when I brought this Trua body back, I just felt so much better. And ever since then, this Trua body started to feel more active. So I would say the more projections we do, practice makes perfect. So the more projections we are doing to different kinds of places, we are also making our true body more conscious of itself. I want to give some descriptions of what the true body is as well. Like it's it's been described as the safe bardo, like that. That's it, when you die. That's the body that's going to carry you through safely through the safe Christic passages. It's also the perfected version of ourselves. So I think the age thirty three was the ascension age. And it's like the perfected body, everything that's uh, in your original template, I guess, minus the distortions. Also, it's the the body that's going to ascend. Like, it's the one that's already there to connect with. Yes. So, so even if we, have, if, if we have some serious distortions in this physical body, the true body is not going to have them if we heal it enough. So... Um, Basically, it's our body which is going to enable us, as you said, full ascension uh, to the deity planes. And yeah, working with it is just pure joy. I think it's much better than the astral projection. Yeah. Um, I was doing only the astral pro projection for like a month or something. I wasn't quite aware of the plasma body at that time. And it was okay, but it wasn't the same kind of an experience as in the plasma body. Uh, besides the plasma body has a lot more possibilities it could go through much more advanced gates than the astral body right and your advice would be like to establish a stronger conduit to the physical body with the true body to do the journeys right yes and, because what could happen during the astral projections um your astral body, if you don't do a strong protection, it could easily get infiltrated, hijacked, attacked. Um, I had many cases of actually saving the astral body from some kind of a yeah. from some kind of a space time because it was actually stuck. It was being stolen, and yes. then you're feeling so empty and you don't know what's happening to you. Well, it's actually not there. <laughs> So, um, yeah, uh, establishing this plasma body connection is, is the best because um, you don't only charge yourself with these high frequencies, but you also, you have a safe passage. You don't have to be afraid of getting manipulated or infiltrated in your plasma body. You can just feel safe. You can do safe projections without being afraid that something could actually happen uh, in your anatomy. And speaking of the astral, do you feel that there's, I think there was some mention in KDDL2 that there's been intervention happening on that level, like the second density, 4, 5, and 6, uh, infrared, infrapink, I'm trying to remember some of the KDDL2 uh, manual. I think it was mentioned in KDDL1, if that's what you mean, that Earth is actually going to get disconnected from the astral plane okay. and get connected to this... Uh, Plane, but on the deity planes. Yes, yeah, that's right. Uh, and Earth is going to connect with its uh, like with its internal creation soul. So let's um, go into that because that's the timeline split, right? That's that's uh, some of the foundation that's leading up to the the timeline split. The information on it. What do you feel? Do you think it is going to be like this separation 
of even communities, of communication, of just people in general not being able to connect anymore. So I do believe that this is mostly going to happen on the energetic level, uh, that people are just going to kind of stop noticing each other, those who don't, re those who will follow different paths, because in in November this year, we will be having this uh, split when it comes to the Metatronic and the Crystal Spiral coming across each other and we will see which spiral is going to win. Well, I'm sure it will be the Crystal Spiral. However, um, there will be some people who will follow this Metatronic Spiral. Um, I do believe that it's going to happen this way, that people will actually start to stop seeing each other but not, not like physically they will just have this frequency like kind of repulsion yeah exactly so uh i'm kind of already noticing it in my hologram that for some yes. people i'm just invisible yeah they don't yeah. see me <laughs> same like uh, i could start talking to them but they will just like mention a few words with me and just stop the conversation oh, yeah. so um and it's happening in in the other way around as well that I'm just getting like suddenly people message me and I just suddenly get this flow of frequency with them. We just go along with the wave, we talk, share the experience. So this is happening um, in two sides, actually. So I think that's one of the major changes, which is slowly starting to appear uh, in this hologram for those who actually pay attention. It's a really interesting subject, and it keeps coming up in our Telegram group, too. I think you're, you're in that, so you've seen some mm -hmm. of the conversation on that. So it's almost like a predestined thing, and this is just my own perspective. Like the accumulation of all of our free will decisions leading up to this point right now, and what the Christic ratio in the template is. I think she marked it. The, I think the, the science on it is at like 30%. Like if it goes to 29%, then it's not salvageable or it's not repairable i think thing. so um i i feel it this way that basically I'm, I'm seeing that in my hologram also that i feel like until this november we are going to have like until november we still have some time to raise our frequencies the trump and then we've got the sleep we've got the, the split and then I would say, I don't know why, but in my mind, I kind of start seeing this date 2027. Yeah. That's when I think this will keep like divide completely. But we also need this transition period. And I do believe that during this transition period, a lot of things are going to happen. Like, um, I would say the financial collapse. I don't want to be too apocalyptic. So, yeah. you know, just many things that are trying to be predicted. Uh, by many people who are into conspiracy theories. What is interesting that like I was uh, during my visions, I saw like I was thinking when they would give us another possible pandemic. And I saw the date 2028, but I don't believe this will be on the Christic timeline, only on this Metatronic one. So I think that we can just be peaceful as long as we keep on being aligned with ourselves, working with clearing uh, our templates and um, and basically just following uh, our own intuition. Do you remember 2025 as being the, the Metatronic Seed Atom snap-off point? Was that the year? That keeps ringing back in my head. Like That's, that's what I remember from it. <clears throat> I need to go back I and study, but it seems like 2025 was the actual snap-off. So if that's true, it, know, that be, would probably... Could be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could probably pull up the chart mm -hmm. and post that again. Yeah, because it's also, I think it's uh, in the important factor is also this Fia seed in the Earth core. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I'm losing my voice. <laughs> um, this I've been clearing basically... this whole time. My throat's been clearing yeah. the whole time. <laughs> um, so basically, I think this Fia seed um, being um, kind of, let's say, closed or like being override, overridden by this chevron burst frequencies so um if we've got this um chevron burst next year the eighth one and the last one last one then i think this one will be um like the end when it comes to the trumpets and and this fiat seed being like a danger 
to to our to the life uh, field on the planet because what I'd like to also mention is the dark flower because it's often being spoken um, along yes. the kilontic science communities as something quite scary as something that people are kind of afraid of um, it might be scary at first but it's actually very easy to cure it um, even if, it, because I remember that it was said that if it reaches this 30%, it might actually, like, you cannot fully cure it. Yeah. Um, I experienced that it starts to poison the soul. Like, the soul starts to get the dark flower as well, not just the plasma body. And that's when the problem kind of gets, because that's when the body starts to get infiltrated by an entity. You and lose identity. You yes. You start to lose identity. And I was dealing with people like that. Um, I had this client who's actually, um, he was technically diagnosed with blood cancer, but that wasn't exactly true because they never said he has it. They just said because of the bad blood results, he has a cancer. So that's not quite true. However, um, I, when I was connecting with him, I saw this soul being basically poisoned with the dark flower. This black tar was not just on the plasma body, but also on the soul. So I actually had to clear the soul first, make sure, like, bring back the connection to the source with the soul, and then start with assisting the dark flower. Just so, real quick, um, real quick. So mm -hmm. when you brought the connection back to the soul, the the importance from what I'm seeing would be actual coherency for the person to make better decisions to want to heal and like to have that intention there to heal of course of course it's always about the intention and about the free will yes. um he was shocked with all of that and then i had other cases like that when it gets really bad with our physical bodies and with our um mentality when it comes to depression losing your own and uh, our own uh, our own identity and also like um just feeling like we just don't exist here anymore then there's something definitely wrong here and um that's On what the they are level. doing mm -hmm. that's what they are doing the fatally um they are trying to bring this dark flower to the critical point where they could start overtaking the soul and that's when the problem gets really serious. But it's still able to get reversed if one starts to work with the techniques, if one wants to start working with themselves. And the reversals, like, because this kind of brings up the subject of the violet um, infiltration, if you will, or the violet ray being compromised on that level, which is a plasma level. So there's, and I think that's the emphasis of the fatality attack, it, it, it's the reverse violets, right? It's a re reverse violet frequency, a plasma. So have, so you been, have you been able to reverse the reverse on that level? Have you seen it go that far? Is it mainly just soul level? Uh, well, but I'm, that, that's one other thing that I would like to clarify because I said the soul, but I'm not talking about the soul that we're thinking about on the external creation level. I'm talking about the soul on the internal. Okay. So that's even a deeper level. That's what they are doing. They are poisoning the soul on the internal level so they could cut it off from the eternal creation. And then, you know, the external level is connected to the internal. So it also, this one also gets disconnected. So the deity, so like a, the deity mm -hmm. identity is getting reversed. So. Yes. And that's, yeah. that's a very difficult case then. So um, basically the only cure for that is using the urea frequencies. Uh, because you could try with the sun, uh, sun 8 plasma, which cannot get reversed, but the urea frequencies from the EFI consciousness field are much more powerful. If you're bringing this plasma vapor, actually, it's like the plasm, not the plasma, but the plasm, you're bringing back this pre-plasma, which is healing this reversed plasma currents. So that's the only cure for this case. So you're seeing on, okay, so like on a planetary level, it's already been overridden. The frequencies here and available. What do you see as far as people able to work with that frequency? Do you think that that's going to happen to where all of us are 
are going to make it through this? Are people making that choice from what you're and I know that you're kind of new to this, you're just coming in, but what do you what do you intuit on this? Uh, you mean basically, uh, okay, so I do feel like um, not all of the people are going to, like, let's say, ascend along with the earth. I do believe that some people, their their souls kind of chosen to fulfill the space dust return. Uh, I have seen some people um, where their souls actually gave up. And they just decided to get infiltrated. And that's when I cannot really do anything. Because if the soul makes a free will choice, it's not my thing to make a decision for them. However, um, I feel like many, many souls are still going to awaken. And that they are in the process of awakening. So I do believe that many of us are still going to make this way through. So even if the option is available, there there may not be coherency to make the right decision for themselves to get out of it. It feel, I mean, I don't think it's for us to judge whether it's a good decision or not, because right. each soul has a plan for themselves. And I, I remember this wonderful excerpt. I don't remember which workshop was that, but it was the Freedom Teachings, where Ashayana actually says that it's like she talks about the Ioni and that we are all incarnations of the Ioni and that uh, they look at us with a great dose of respect and love and uh, they realized and like us coming to this planet net we were aware that we have a difficult mission to complete and that not not all of us may get through this and come back but right. we know that it was worth it well just to put a little more context because it's been explained that all the levels of fall gone fall fall fell all these falls are able to be hosted right now with this level of frequency that you're saying can over, that's overriding the reversals. So I, I'm looking at this and her, the big question always in the workshops is what is it going to look like? You know, and that's what I'm always have my ear on the, the pulse trying to see what it's going to look like, where it's going. And I know that I've worked personally with people and, and again, not to go into judging people or anything like that but you get to a place where you can, you can sense it and feel what people are going through and what they carry just inherently what they carry i do think that like some of the the darkest lines that are on this planet have the opportunity to heal and i know that there's some representatives that are stepping up from those lines illuminati lines straco all all these fallen lines that have been in rehabilitation for so long that there still is some cognition left to make better decisions. Now, how long it sticks, you know, how long it's going to play out is kind of yet to be seen. But there is like some sparks of that that's happening that I'm witnessing, that I'm starting to see. Kind of like shields that are forming a resonance of people, you know, ethically yes, they're um, still working mm -hmm. things out, but yeah. That's definitely the thing, especially that lately I had quite a few uh, type 3 indigos coming to me. Yeah. So it feels like they want this bioregenesis, this part of uh, the Nephilim or some kind of other soul which is in them, it wants this integration. It kind of, I feel like it sends this signal to the Orafim soul, to the angelic uh, soul, to kind of like help me out, find a way to save me. So yes, I do believe that many of those, let's say, fallen angelics are going to find a way through. Uh, are going to also um, to make that ascension. Um, I remember that uh, in my before I actually came down on, down on Earth, I used to um, work in Arcturus, in the Arcturus stellar system, uh, helping the uh, fallen races with their bioregenesis, especially during these uh, Gaian Orion wars. Uh, some fractions decided to um, go for it and the biogenesis, so I kind of have flown with these entities. And it was hard, but, um, but they can do it. That's why I also feel like in here it's kind of my purpose to assist these souls with finding their way back. And just to point out to Arcturus, Phantom Arcturus is where the trumpets are actually pulsing from yes. as well. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it's it's just fascinating to be living in this time and to embark this 900 years, you know, because you're we're kind of making some conduits and threads into the end point of the 900 years from what I feel and seeing how, what people's decisions, how, what they're doing for themselves <clears throat> on the micro level and how it could potentially affect the larger communities that they exist in, that they represent, you know, their, their lines. So it's really interesting. Yes. It's fascinating how just people start to, because I feel like, um, it's not the always the nice experiences, but it's the difficult experiences which make us uh, learn a very precious lesson for us. And it's through the difficult experiences many of us came across this knowledge and started to use it to heal ourselves and to kind of be more conscious about this reality. So I do believe that the main purpose of Kilontic science and I feel like it will be for many hundreds of years because I feel like there will be always us Christics and the next generations over the next 900 years always trying to bring back this knowledge, to restore it, um, to always show its value to others so they could always have this choice to follow this path. Also, the, the Nomi gene comes to mind too. What you, You've been kind of revisiting Aruba as well. So there was mention and emphasis in that workshop that uh, the, the, the Nomi gene is in all walks of life. You know, it could be a Catholic priest, a doctor, anybody. And these sleeper contracts also, people that, Christics that aren't going to wake up intentionally, that are just kind of holding a shield for bridging. Mm -hmm. So that's important to know. That's been a big question. It's like, oh, my mom doesn't believe in any of this, or my friend doesn't, so are they going to make it? You know, and anybody could, anybody has the potential that they could be carrying this and actually be shield holders. So that's, that's yes, something. Uh, actually, I must say that there have been some kind of intense activations in the Nomi seat over the past few days. I would say that's because of this Chevron coming in. Yeah. But I had this kind of thing yesterday that like a part of my body went down. And I realized just in the morning that it was sitting in a Nomi seat when I kind of went down. Uh, to start doing these eight foot breaths, I noticed a part of myself there. So there were some kind of activations going there just to amplify the seat and kind of send the frequencies to people uh, who actually have this Nomi gene or activated it through the techniques. Uh, well, a perfect example of someone who's actually, like you said, not conscious, but still like catching a lot of these frequencies is, for example, my grandpa, who's very much related to this... Um, Etienne Mantis that were spoken about in the Voyagers. Oh wow! And uh, even though uh, he he's not he's like he's not doing the techniques, I sometimes do sessions with him to kind of like assist him with the healing in general. But he just has this amazing spirit, and whenever I connect with him, I'm like wow! Like he's not doing the techniques, but he's very <laughs> charged, very healthy. Yes. And it's just incredible that. Um, he technically is like a person living in 3D, but energetically he's just an amazing entity. So no, I, I pick up, I do Uber, I pick up people all day, and I see it. You know, people in the, it's a military town out here. Even people in our in the Air Force and different branches of the Army, you can feel a frequency that comes in. You know, it doesn't matter what they're affiliated with or what they're doing. It's it's getting noticeable. You know, the people that carry this, it really is. But I think it's on purpose like that, that they are in the military, in the police, all sorts of things like that, because, um, right, they anchor the frequencies and they spread them to other people. So they kind of assist yeah. with raising the consciousness, um, even, they, even if they are not fully aware of that. So, uh, so this is like a great thing that uh, was organized in here to keep kind of like raising the consciousness without really doing the actual grid work. Yes, and also the connection to J12, Joshua 12, the original Jesus Christ, right? Like this is his lineage that was spread out through all the 12 tribes, if I'm understanding that correctly too. So it's in every single race, in every country, everywhere. Yeah, definitely. All by and design. The Qatari people, um, they are just um, 
I just feel such a strong connection to them, to the Qatari people from the south and France. They are also related to uh, to Jeshua, if I remember correctly. Um, like this story with this, uh, with with the knowledge, and then how how they were like, you know, how the life was just uh, ended very quickly by the Crusades. But um, they are just amazing, and I feel like because I think Ashayana said that like there were three Qatari people who kind of managed to escape when that crusade began. All right. I do believe that their lineage is still going. Yes. So they are kind of also like still continuing that heritage of Yeshua. And whether they're aware of it or not, like it's it's still preserved. It's not like something where they were trying to consciously protect their bloodlines. It was just passed through. That's probably the stealth part of it too. Yes. So... Um... Basically, it's it's always like I think uh, that's that's also the main reason why we should never judge people, because um, we don't know what they are really doing here, what their real purpose on here is. We might get different kinds of impressions from them, but um, the truth is they might be totally different than we than our ego first thinks that they are. And even with the vaccines and stuff, what have you seen with that? Is it detrimental? Like people, because this is huge in the community right now. There's a huge divide of the vaxxed and the non-vaxxed. And stay away, you're shedding, you know. <laughs> yeah. So um, I do believe uh, that first of all, they aren't going to infect us with anything. So um, we can hug them. We can shake hands with them. We don't have to treat them as if they are like, spreading some kind of an infectious disease. I think that only like um, sexual contact could be dangerous because the dark flower is spread through the sexual uh, contact as well. But I think that what the vaccines are causing, because I, I have seen that many times on my sessions. So there are basically three main things and it depends on actually what in, that vaccine includes because the first thing that comes up are the parasites that are in the blood structure. Then we've got different sorts of nanotechnology. And then the dark flower on the plasma body layer, it's really making it very, very bad. So, but there are also people who have taken it and it was the placebo. And I have this theory since a pretty long time that um, it's not a quite a coincidence that some people got the placebo because... Um, I was working with a few people and I was like shocked that like they told me they took the vaccine, but it turned out it was a placebo. So I think that um, some people weren't main, meant to take it and they just got the placebo. There are no coincidences. Uh, however, I think that um, what these vaccines really do is they just make us like they really make us in danger of getting infiltrated of getting this dark flower just spreading through the plasma body um, and just making it worse. But at the same time, it's not like it just means the end of us. Like we had this theory that they will just, there will be so many, you know, deaths that like everyone is just going to, to die, everyone who took that vaccine. That's not quite true. That's, that's not going to manifest in our hologram, I think. Um, but for sure it's going to affect the quality of the health, but also depending on what actually this vaccine included. Because it feels like each one of these vaccines included something else. It depends on the type, but also on the dose that you took. So at the same time, I would like to call everyone that this is curable. And actually the plasma frequencies are the one which are kind of starting to, um, to again, integrate your structure and clear the DNA. Uh, from this substance. Yeah, I was thinking that there may have been protection offered a few years before the vaccine too with the rainbow reservoirs because she had these charts out showing the black goo, the fatality, like the reversal plasma stuff on the epigenetic level and what the rainbow reservoirs um, was offering on the DNA level to, as protection. And this was like three years before COVID. And I, I can't help but sense there was some ahead of time intervention that may have taken place through the earth grids for that time to protect like people that had 
were more receptive to the plasmas and the coating and everything. So be protected from that vaccine. That's very accurate, actually, because um, because the plasma frequency is working very well with like protecting the DNA. If you have your DNA protected, for me, it kind of shows up in my inner vision as the rain as filled with rainbow colors. So uh, definitely, I feel like there was some kind of an intervention from the guardians uh, to protect certain groups of people who had to take it because they were forced to or who kind yeah. of did it, but they weren't fully aware of the consequences. So yeah, yeah. definitely. Even for it being an activation that many years ago, it would be well absorbed in the earth grids. So for people to receive that protection years later. Just a theory. So. I mean, she, the she planet was being prepared for that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to tune more into that, like ahead of time intervention stuff, looking back, because I know that we've been protected through all of this to make it this far. So there has been a lot of unseen intervention as well. Definitely. So, um, you just have to tune in and basically if, um, if you actually feel connected to the place where you live in, because we, it's not like, I, I also remember that uh, she has said that you are born basically in a place where you're supposed to be, like your template matches the planetary grids. Exactly. So uh, if you have this connection with your local planetary grids, you might feel the waves of frequency going through them. You might feel if there is anything you can do. Just say an intention and it already might be enough, actually. Uh, the less, the better sometimes. But if you actually tune in to your planetary grids in your local area, you might feel a lot. And speaking of the grids, sir, I've, I've talked with uh, actually a couple of people from Germany and she did a tour showing like the dark flowering grids not too far from where you're at over there have you picked up anything like what's the grids like in your area have you traveled much or know other people in these in these countries where the dark flowering grids are uh well it's 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 interesting that you mentioned that because um i have some information uh, because i was lately talking to some people who claim to be doing the grid work Yes. And that's not actually, and that was in Germany actually, because they are now in Germany. It's like they travel around the world and they say they are spreading plasma, but I don't, I didn't feel that they do. I felt very dark frequency from them. And this and is I the chaos? They are in, hmm? chaos community people? No, it's nobody from okay. the chaos. Mm -hmm. They don't support the chaos. And I, I was just chatting with them once. And they said they are in Germany and like I, they added me to this group um, with like they're, them doing the grid work. I was never engaged in uh, like doing that, but I was yeah. just like watching. And it all just felt like they are spreading the dark flower in there. Actually, I felt very dark essences from them. And it's funny that you're saying that because actually, yeah, they are in Germany now. So there are a lot of... Uh, things going on in Germany and like my father who's a driver he's driving all across Europe he really doesn't like the energy of Germany there's a lot of work there mm -hmm. um, from what I have seen so far because I had this lately I had this map of the world being displayed and like the countries and like the amount of the chevron they are accepting and what they still need to clear when it comes to Poland Poland kind of looks like foggy it's not too much dark flower, but it's also not like too charged with the plasmas. I'm working very intensively with my region, like I'm often going on a walk and spreading the frequencies of the rainbow plasma to the river and then up to the planetary grids. So I make sure that I have like um, a good enough environment to be able to do my energetic work in here. Um, I'm not that much engaged into the grid work when it comes to the bigger level. Yeah. Um, I know that people who work with that actively. Um, but yeah, German, Germany really doesn't feel good when it comes to the countries which are really accepting this Chevron. I have seen France, Portugal and Spain when it comes to Europe. Yeah, I don't think the... I don't think there's been any mention that it's kind of safe to go out and do grid work or any of the Templars material right now. Even back then, she advised uh, no less than six people 
you know, because you kind of set yourself up as a target. So if you're going out there by yourself or two or three, four people, it, it can't be safe. And you've all got to really be in unison with what you're doing. The mani, mani, ire, all the frequencies present for that, so the feminine, the male, uh, to run yes. direct current. So. Yes, I was told by the guardians that uh, the work should be done in individually. So you can work with your local area yeah. or send some good frequencies to other places, but it's better if you do it locally and like maybe you and maybe one more person, but like not in groups, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So before going into your perspectives on the work here, because there's a few notes, I wanted to ask about the DNA bonding, the seed atom journey. You mentioned that there was an experience that you had with that. Uh, yes, basically it was like um, on my second journey to the seed atom, I was fully like awakened to, um, to what my template is really about. But what am I doing here actually? I was like told that I'm supposed to like, um, I kind of work like an activator, like I speak to people and something starts to activate in them. And at that time I didn't really understand what they are talking about until I started getting to know what the know me code is about. Um, and also uh, this comeback of these memories, like more of these galactic memories of uh, of me being in other stellar systems, assisting the guardian races, being a guardian, actually. I mean, all of us are guardians. Um, and the DNA bonding, it also felt like I activated some part of my cosmic code. Like there was some, like a part of me, but like a really conscious entity awakening inside me, an entity which was me. But it's a part of myself that I really um, needed to integrate. And uh, on that second part of this seed atom journey, which was like placing these Alhumbra crystals and we had these different Alhumbra councils like spreading the frequencies to us, I felt all sorts of different emotions. It was like a very intense clearing for me. Um, a lot of emotions that I felt like were kind of being accumulated during different incarnations. And um, this DNA bonding felt like it was a new beginning for me. Like I cleared something in myself and um, and I was able to actually really like for real to start doing my purpose here. So it was a very enlightening journey. And as I said before, like the true beginning of me working with the Guardian Councils, with the Alhambras. Was there a physical experience with the Seed Atom journey? Like, did you notice anything in 3D, like the next day, anything that impacted you? Um... I actually went on a walk uh, right after doing that journey and um, I just felt like all the colors were so bright and like uh, I was hearing the birds singing. Uh, I started paying attention to all of these things that I haven't paid attention to before that much. So I kind of felt like I'm more tuned in with nature, with other forms of life that I'm more in harmony with, with the universe itself. Yeah, that makes sense. Like new circuitry coming on, you're more aware of uh, Yes, because when I put these uh, crystals in my, um, in my uh, black crystal sack, um, I, felt like, I felt like they started to change something in my blood. <laughs> uh. so, so yeah, that, that was a really uh, kind of an enlightening experience, I could say. Right. Did you do any of the starlight transmissions, the meiotic blood flush? It was kind of an older one that we had. It was working directly with the blood. It's really interesting. Um, I do remember that term, the meiotic, but... Um, it was the first level of plasmas when the Alhumbra first came on. It was like the first plasma that could override uh, the reversals that were coming on. I think I did because I remember the name. Um, yeah, I think that was that one which really started to like go into my blood and kind of I had this vision that is killing some parasites in my <laughs> blood mm. cells. Um, so yeah, that that was like yeah, these these first techniques were very very much clearing for me. 
uh, I was sometimes even experiencing them negatively. Like I'm, I was kind of feeling anger, sadness sometimes during these techniques, but yeah. then I was feeling much progress. So uh, there has always been like a major shift whenever I was doing some kind of plasma technique. So a lot of residual emotions sometimes come up to clear and be experienced too. Yes, okay. and that was actually making this shift change for good. Like, um, that was what was happening in that second part of this seed atom journey that I was struggling with so many emotions that like a part of me was like, I wanted to stop. Like, I, I don't want to do this technique, but like my higher self was feeling like I must finish it because something is clearing. So I'm glad I managed to finish it because it, I was struggling a lot with myself. Mm. Uh, when I was doing this technique for the first time, but now I know that it was just something necessary that needed to get cleaned up. Yeah, that's fascinating how you described like the black hands around your head and then the headaches went away. Like you could literally see it with your inner vision and then on the 3D level, it resolved something physically for you. That's really important to note, stuff like that. It's, it's always... Uh, easier when you're seeing things and then like experiencing that they are actually gone so i do believe that uh, working on uh, like uh, expanding your inner vision is something that we need to focus on when we are starting with our uh, process because this is all making this just more tangible but at the same time it also very individually depends on the template because i know that there are some people who, who for example have this clear audience that they could just hear and they don't see much but they could hear so uh, each one of us has some kind of abilities which come out quicker again it really depends on our template definitely so i want to move into your perspectives of, of the ks group itself and what you're seeing i also want to thank you for your patience on the hours because i know it's getting a little late over there so i'll try to wrap it up oh that's not a problem um i'm just going to charge my laptop Okay. Um, All right. Yeah. I'm going to go through some of the okay. questions here. Okay. So just, so, just mm -hmm. some feedback on what you're seeing with the group. Uh, have you gotten to know the community that well, joined many groups, made connections with people since you've been in? You've been in for like two years, two or three years. Uh, you, yes. Yeah, so basically at first I was doing this individually, just working with the techniques before I actually started to search for more of the groups and such. And that's how I came across this Christie community on Telegram. Um, and I started talking to many people, uh, made some really good friends there actually, uh, people I'm still friends with until today. Um, and also like getting to know uh, people through my work, um, like on my sessions. Uh, now I'm really good friends with many of them as well. And they also come from the KS community. So. Uh, yeah, it's it's really nice to actually be a part of the of the case groups because I will, it used to be a part of many kind of you know spiritual communities like the galactic and such, but um, there are just so many distortions there, and it feels like the chaos people are actually focused on their own growth. They are always open minded. They are always open for suggestions. So it's really wonderful uh, to be able to. Um, Talk to people who kind of have similar perspectives to you, who are open, uh, who know about the guardians, uh, who know about this, uh, this, all of these energies. So, um, yeah, basically interacting with the chaos community enabled me to get to know people who are having similar experiences as I do, who have wonderful perspectives on things. And this journey is continuing until today. And this is all just very exciting. What direction are you seeing the like the KS community going into the future? Like when, with humanity, do you think it's going to mainstream or is it just going to kind of stay out of the public's eye in the way of like science? Because there's definitely a very pronounced science that's emerging in our times right now. There's some, uh, some that's beneficial, like the neural science, uh, what we were doing with the elastin axon bonding, I think is a mm -hmm. really good blend of like the science that we're learning with synapses one of my favorites mine too definitely in the pools and everything that followed the and most experiential too it's, it's like your own system you're interfacing oh, yeah. but what are you seeing in the way of this like mainstreaming with like modern science and 
people in the public and stuff. Does it need to stay out of the public eye or do you think it's going to merge into it? So I do believe that the KS will always stay out of the public eye, actually. Um, I do believe that this knowledge is kind of working on the law of attraction, meaning that it will get to certain groups of people who used to be involved in some planetary missions or the grid work. And also to those who actually hold like a specific planetary contract, uh, which is going to uh, and also to those who actually declared that they want to consciously work on the bio bioregenesis. So I think it will always be kind of like a more private community, private in terms of the, def of the fact that not many people will be into it, but those who actually join it will be fully involved into it and they will keep spreading this, this knowledge to others. But I do believe that this will be uh, basically going um, progressively. Progressively with time we will start to, the quantum physicians will start to kind of discover that this world has more than just three dimensions. Um, and many kind of upgrades will start to happen in our life. But I do believe that the original knowledge itself will become more, will remain basically private for at least the next few hundreds of years. She did mention that some of that's already happened in the way of like NASA discovering the Merkaba electromagnetic fields and the vortices around the Earth and the Sun. So that's interesting. Yes, I mean, uh, I meant that basically like the knowledge that before the scientists like start to connect the facts that, oh yeah, it was yeah. actually said in the case before, that will that will happen with time. But I do believe that these changes about the Merkaba fields will start to occur. But we also have to be very careful with that because um, basically we still have to remember that they are basically looking into the distorted galaxy. So right. if they start to measure the Merkabas and think that this is the correct spin or they start to get more, get more into the Taurus fields, they might, they might start to actually connect the facts with the sacred ge geometry, but this metatronic geometry. So again, we have to um, see if this isn't any kind of a deception of, uh, of the ETs trying to bring more of the spiritual science, but this distorted science. So let's just keep our eyes open for that. And speaking of that, have you seen Noel Tobin's work on the spirals of creation, giving the comparison of the Fibonacci, just an yes, excellent I presentation. I have read the whole book, The Spirals of Creation. It's, it's, one, it's one of my favorite ones, honestly. Yeah. And I always try to bring it back to people's attention, especially when it comes to this famous flower of life. If we've got this metatronic flower of life, we'll have this Katara grid, which is metatronic, fitting into it. And it has 10 or 11 centers. Yeah. So this is, again, creating a metatronic structure. So when it comes to the flower of life, which is the Christic one, it really must have the right diameters so it could fit the Katara grid with 12 centers. Are you seeing, does all of the metatronic shapes and geometries, does all of it fit within Christic ratios, like within the crystal spiral? Is it inside of it and it's kind of exists in it or is it like completely separate? I feel like these are kind of the deviations from the Christic spiral. So this spiral kind of starts to go slower, like Noel Tobin was describing it as if in the beginning it's actually having like a bigger speed, a bigger quantum than the crystal spiral. But eventually there is a point where they connect, like they meet each other and then they split. But the crystal spiral starts to override this metatronic one. So... Um, I do believe that the metatronic spiral came from the crystal spiral because when the source has created this cosmos, it was all divine. But then, based on our free will choices, it started to get like distorted. So the distortions have the potential to again get aligned, maybe that's the word. Uh, I do believe that the metatronic spiral is just not in alignment with the, with the Christic one. And on an individual level, what we experience with our own codes too, like the snap off and where the Metatronic is overridden by the crystal too, is interesting. Yeah, a lot of us are probably experiencing some degree of that right now. 
with the timeline splits, like just on a personal level, like we were talking about clearing and purges. So yes, in some ways it's uh, organic. And it could be manifesting even more powerfully because um, we are feeling that these distortions which were in our bodies and we were just living with them. Now with these accretion cycles, they start to feel like they start to feel uncomfortable to us. Yeah. Like the Jehovian seals, I have been working on clearing that a lot lately. Um, the Jehovian seals, uh, the implants, which kind of suddenly start, we start to feel that they hurt us. Um, the Metatronic code, which is still um, the big amounts of it are in our DNA. So we are on a planetary level, we are in a big clearing cycle. So on our hologram, temporarily, we might be seeing that many people get sick. But that's also because of the of the blockages that their bodies are trying to overcome. Even Bardo waves, she mentioned on a workshop I was streaming the other night. I, I probably should make an excerpt on that too. But she said organically, like the Earth still has a connection on the the soul level with with humans here that are connected to it. Like when they want to leave, like in mass Bardo waves, so that that can be something organic too. Like if there's a disaster and uh, you know, like an earthquake or something, and a whole bunch of people perished from that. It was something that was planned for them to go because they knew that they couldn't hold the frequencies on that level. That's why the Earth sync is so important. Uh, we yeah. need to be synchronized with the planet in case something happens, some kind of a disaster. We are always able to complete the Bardo process and just follow up to that uh version of Earth in the Deity Plains to the Median Earth. Yes. What is, where does chaos stand, like the group, uh, the chaos community among other groups and religions? Are you seeing it as somewhat of a religion in some ways with people? Or what are you seeing with that? So I do believe that the chaos is like a synthesis of all belief systems. Um, as angelic humans, we all used to have one religion. And it was basically unifying the spirituality and science. It used to belong to everyone on Earth. So I feel like um, the, Christi the Christic timeline is basically aiming for unifying all of the religions and science as well and all of the belief systems towards one belief system that we used to have. It's not even a system. It's basically a lifestyle. The way we used to live, the way we used, we used to eat or actually don't eat because we were Breatarians. Uh, it's basically the way we were just um, functioning. It's the way we were living our daily lives, knowing that there is one God source which has created all of us and that this divine energy is always with us, that we are all a part of this divine energy and that we are all aiming towards our highest evolution and that we will all come back to the source and everyone was aware of that and everyone was just practicing these spiritual teachings from the CDT plates. So I do believe that this is what the KS is aiming for. Um, it's about unifying all of these polarities and finding the truth in each of the religions because they are just the deviations from the truth, from the one truth. So I think that we'll find the truth in Islam, in Christianity, and we'll also find the lies which are, we are just going to clear and we'll just all turn it into one um, harmonic system. Right. I totally agree with that. Truth in every religion that's here, there's still some, some jewels of truth that are preserved through all the holy books and everything. And they became the re-legions, is what was mentioned too. Like it was the original legions, the 12, and then it was, you know, obviously used for control and different methods for that. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, but chaos itself and these teachings were never meant to be a, a re-legion at all. Like it's just a practice of... Yes, uh, a daily spiritual practice, and so was the synocracy. Uh, that's, yeah. let's say, like a system that should be in every country, even though there were no countries. But it's about actually like uh, balancing the energy, being aware that every kind of person, of an entity, every form of life is on a certain stage of evolution and that we should solve the conflicts 
with understanding everyone's purposes, with understanding everyone's motives and just with the pure intention of joy, of love towards everybody. So this has been a big question in the past, like when I first started the interviews about the shield split. And, you know, when it was closer to that time around 2012, right after May 2012, that workshop, it was uh, still really fresh with a lot of people and kind of like an open open issue that people were dealing with. What are you seeing this now, years later? Like what it's been over like 12 years later now, just coming into yes. the group, are you seeing uh, signs so of I might, I might say that there are still some kind of disagreements because when I joined um, these different communities, I mean, I joined after the shield sp split, right? But I felt like um, there are many people who are confused and they kind of started spreading fake news about Ashayana having dark flowered in 2012. Uh, about the fact that she's not a Christic anymore and that we should stick only to the freedom teachings. I was a bit confused, but I decided to actually use my own discernment. So I tried some of the plasma techniques. I listened to Ashayana after 2012. And I just felt like her frequency has changed, but not in a bad way, in a good way. That she actually became more pure because... If you're working with the plasmas, uh, you're purifying yourself. And after all, she is the first one who starts to like, like run the wave, let's say. So she must be pure. And I felt like the plasmas are exactly what I feel is the right thing. So for me, she's Christic and people could be saying gossip. They always do, but this is only just to spread divisions. And there's obviously phases of clearings that happen with that as you're working on yourself, working with the frequencies. So there's different things that you're going to go through and changes and everything, appearance-wise. Yes, and, and you might not always feel the best after doing certain types of techniques. You might feel a bit kind of weak um, or that these frequencies are trying to do something to your body. But this is all a process, just like when you take some kind of a medication and you're feeling side effects. That's kind of a similar thing. You're feeling side effects because your body is trying to heal. So that's how it works, I believe. And exactly what you did, like with discerning and just trying it out for yourself, that's, that's what I suggest to people that have that question of, of like coming into this and maybe joining groups that are saying she's compromised or don't do any of the new material. I always redirect people, well, have you tried it? Have you looked at the Chismatic series? Have you done? Have you seen the level of material that's coming out? You know, and tried the techniques for yourself. Yes, and there have been recently this, I don't know if you have seen them, these photoshopped images of Ashayana, yes. like if she had these black eyes or something. Yeah. I was like, wait, I was watching that workshop. She wasn't looking like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that was just so very much uh, faked. And um, I left that group uh, which had that image because like there were just uh, so many posts like saying that she's evil now. Well, again, just people should kind of see and judge for themselves because um, we could listen to others' opinion and that's perfectly fine. But the first um, authority we should listen to is our own soul. Absolutely. And that's what the work is really revolved around when you look at it. What are your thoughts on Earth being translocated from the galaxy and solar system? Are you seeing any signs of, of this happening in your personal hologram? Um, so I have seen the number 333 a lot lately, like the 33 or just the 3 or like the 333. And it's actually the Andromeda, right? The, uh, the gate 3. Um, on this on this um, Stargates map. Um, like I kept coming across this number all the time or waking up at like 3 a.m. and yeah. all of that. So it felt so it felt like for me I'm actually like kind of being called to that uh, Andromeda thing. Um, I, I have seen many synchronicities with that and also I have uh, come across many people uh, on my sessions who are actually from Andromeda Galaxy. 
and I have worked with so many of these uh, energies that I also felt like catching up the frequencies from that system. Uh, so it's definitely a great opportunity for the planet uh, to actually um, find its way through, uh, to, to reconnect with its missing part, because like the Milky Way galaxy used to be a part of Andromeda, as you know. So there are many souls here incarnating from that stellar system to actually, I think, not to only raise the frequency of the planet, but to kind of anchor this specific frequency from Andromeda to support Earth with this process. So do you think the literal physical changes, like of seeing the solar system change and everything, because it's only Earth that's the, it's, it's the Nomi planet, it's the fail-safe planet, so there's all these souls and collectives birthing through this place right now for the next 900 years but as far as the rest of the solar system and the galaxy earth is eventually going to be moved out of that is that what you're saying what you understand i think that earth is going to be like a certain one but i also feel like there will be other pla other planets following um it's always like said that, you know, um, there were many crises when it comes to this planet, when it comes to this solar system, the galaxy and the whole universe. Actually, we have always been suffering from duality, but I don't know. I feel like uh, I feel like it will be the whole galaxy or at least a big part of it, at least the one third of this galaxy. I don't know why, but this number just came through my mouth like the one third should be able to ascend and connect to Andromeda again. Right. And that's pretty much what's being explained is happening too. Like there's pockets of uh, the fail-safe planets and systems that are kind of raising up right now. I would like to also mention the Triangle Galaxy because when we're doing yeah. this Wind of the Breath technique, we've got this uh, blue pillar and the pink pillar. And this pink one is the Andromeda but the blue one is the Triangle Galaxy. And um, it's also, uh, I, I saw it as a very small galaxy actually, but like um, the beings from there are just magical. And um, I also had the opportunity to work with some of them and the uh, souls from the Triangle Galaxy, they actually come here as well. There aren't many of them here, but they struggle a lot when it comes to like, um, adjusting their frequencies to the physical body. That's why they often struggle with different health problems. Uh, however, um, it's also a galaxy which is engaged into this Crystal River Facelift host. So we've got these two galaxies which are like the most uh, important nowadays. Hmm, that's interesting. And you've worked with them directly, like some of the yes. beings. Um, wow. Some of the people actually like they uh, they wanted a session with me and then I look and like, wow, you're from that triangle galaxy, which is like right. making its ascension. So uh, they are the star seeds, but they have a very, very special gene code, which is really, really desired by some entities. Okay. Um, because you, there are some targeted um, star seeds and the type three indigos, uh, which are actually really like um, warning this genetic code, they crave for it. So uh, this kind of souls really should make, um, really should care about their field, protect it a lot, uh, because there could be a lot of infiltration attempts. Have you heard much about this, the rare blood type? What's it called, the RH, the Reese's? Where it's, um, it's kind of similar to what you're saying, like they're, they're almost like tracks, you know, and they're dealing with a lot of attack. Have you studied much of that? I think it's mentioned in KS2 that may be a, a linked with J12 as well. Uh, I, I haven't studied that much in depth, but yeah, in general, I heard about it. Uh, I you do haven't believe met that anybody? this could be related. Uh, I do believe that this could be related because um, the blood is kind of created on the basis of the DNA template. So if uh, these two factors are related to each other, someone has a very unique type of the genetic code and we've got a specific type of blood manifesting, then yes, that could definitely be true. 
What is your definition of hosting? So I do believe uh, that basically the hosting uh, is like giving the right conditions for the planet to a planet which is at a full state to regain its ascension potential and return to the source along with all forms of life which have made this choice to do so. So in simple terms, the hosting um, is like giving Earth a helpful hand to give it another chance to uh, raise its frequency, to give another chance for other forms of life to raise their frequency and to go into higher uh, planes of reality and to be able to like make its reconnection to the source. Because that's what it's about. It's always about coming home. So hosting gives like a safe passage back home, I would say. Do you believe this happens on an individual level? Like with people being hosted through other people or shields type thing? Definitely. Um, because that was even mentioned that if we are doing the plasma techniques, we are affecting the genetic code of people who we are related to. So our sisters, our brothers might be catching up these frequencies. Um, so that's definitely the thing. Uh, I do believe that uh, if we are doing the techniques, we are not just or like working with the energies in general. We are not just affecting the individual shield, but like the collective shield in general, the families, uh, the nations, the whole planetary collective. This is all interconnected. And what kind of improvements could occur in our 3D hologram if we started applying chaos to all aspects of life? So um, I actually got some ideas. I mean, there would be many changes, but I think that um, we could, if we started working on our Merkaba fields, we wouldn't need the <laughs> means of transport. We could actually use our Merkabas as we used to. Um, the, like the problems of the science would be solved because I also remember that Noel Tobin was also writing about the laws of thermodynamic and how these laws are actually fake because they are kind of like uh, suggesting a closed universe. Um, so basically we would be able to solve all of the problems that this quantum physics is currently struggling with. Um, we would also be able to kind of stop the conflicts in the world. If we started work, working with the VARS, all of the people um, working with the virtues, the attitudes, the responsibilities, uh, there would be no conflicts in the world, basically, because we would be able to negotiate peacefully and introducing the synocratic system would also help a lot with that. Um, we'd also be going heading towards the uh, holistic medicine, which I see that right now it's very much improving. Uh, there are many people who start to work with natural methods and I see that it's really doing some good effects. So the energetic and the natural medicine, um, that's definitely something which is starting to manifest in this hologram already. Um, and we also, I would say that we would be uh, able to improve the quality of our water. Uh, I work a lot with the water. I used to do this hydrolase thing from the sliders yeah. and removing the jarosh from the food. And it really, really helps uh, when it comes to raising the frequency of the foods. And lately I'm also charging the water with the plasma. And that's also uh, really like giving a good quality to the water. Yeah, we de we keep the Allura Rashatan code. That looks kind of like a flower, rainbow flower from sliders. We keep that under our distiller pitcher. So every batch that we make, you know, I've done that for years and years, and it, it's very effective. Totally. Mm -hmm. I want to second that on the bars also, the virtues, attitudes, and responsibilities. Like the wheel of freedom, all that information is really, it can be a roadmap to a functional community, you know, a functional Christic community. I think that those were specifically given to us to start designing that and build a foundation to lead into that type of community for ourselves. Coming out of all this history and trauma and everything, it's it's working with the emotional body, if you look at it. Um, 
there's just everything that's there and there's a lot to explore in it. Yes, and you can look at it from different perspectives. If someone is into science, you could look at it that if you embody, if you are kind, you embody the frequency of kindness and it goes into your template. Yes. You can just like look at it from the spiritual level that basically being kind is making you happy and is making other happy. So this is also like uh, working well for you. So you could look at it from many different perspectives. And I think that the VARs are like one of the topics in KS, which are like um, the easiest for people to actually understand, especially for people who haven't been that much into the teachings, but they could understand the concept very easily. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'm looking forward to when we'll be able to like co-create that in this community, like tangibly. I've started a VARS group and I've just kind of tiptoed into it and filling it out and asking for guidance on that as well, just online, you know, because online is a totally different feel than in person and what co-housing efforts, um, it, there's a lot more complexities and things with that. So just to make it but I think it's, it's a great idea to create a group like that so people could start integrating even at some point we could hold some kind of an online meetings yeah uh, that's yeah. also some kind of an integration and if people start seeing that like there are many people working with the vars and introducing them to our lives we could start sharing the experience sharing this to others and uh soon we will uh, see more and more people getting into that for sure it's definitely in demand, like you say, the online meetings, the Zoom calls and stuff for people just to, to have like a more personal feel of like face to face, hearing your voice and connecting more authentically. And we, there has been an effort for that. Like we're on our second, third round of doing that. What seems to be happening is that we almost move into like a little mini clearing session. And then we just need to take a break and just process what happened. Like it'll, it'll bring in too much frequency too fast or something. So we, we have tried in the past over the last two or three years. And maybe there'll be another effort for it as we talk about it. You know, maybe people will come back together and we'll co-create it again. Yes, maybe we'll just manifest that for it to happen very soon. Uh, I feel like um, when people are interacting on the video call, there is a very strong uh, energy exchange. The frequency literally flow, flowing through the screen. So uh, I'm sure that it will be an, it would be an exciting experience to start that again. Absolutely, yeah. And it's kind of a courageous effort in the times that we live in with all the, the trumpets still going. I kind of want to wait until the snap off points and then just be sure that we're doing this correctly minus the interfer possible interference that could be causing some of these things. Yes, I mean, there are some people saying that there actually might be more trumpets uh, yeah. coming up. Um, After I think this. that we'll see what's going to happen, the way how we're going to feel it. But I feel like what's going to happen between this period uh, of Hitaro and the Hitalon, this period is very important. And then we'll see what is going to manifest. Actually, we can look at this... Um, at this chart where Ashayana was showing, um, you know, these uh, events going on and how they are manifesting, I think, eight years later. So that kind of yeah. gives us a clue what is going to occur in the 3D. Yeah, the octant cycle. That's important to notice. Yeah, and I think every Hitharo, it's been a density that's cleared. Like last summer, it was density two, she mentioned. So I guess density three is the summer. Like it just is starting now. I need to go back and check, like, don't quote me on that, but it, that's what it feels uh, like the cycle is. I for sure remember that uh, we've got this um, density transposi this transposi uh, transposition platform yeah. opening this rainbow ring this year. Okay. Uh, it actually opened during Hitaro, it's already open. Um, so because we had this crystal caverns, they opened a bit later, and now we've got the rainbow ring, so... Um, these are wonderful places to project into as well. And is that actually each density moving up that's being cleared, like with the chevrons? Am I understanding that correctly? Is that what you're saying? I think so, yes. I mean, the chevron is supposed to clear like every single trumpet pulse. Yeah. And if the trumpet pulse is kind of affecting each of our chakras, so that would I would say it's like every dimension, perhaps. So I would say that 
it's reaching density free because we've got the seven trumpets, but we'll have like an extra chevron burst eight next year. Yeah. So, so I think it will like create something like a higher basis for the frequencies to flow um, from density free, and perhaps maybe even we will get more from density four. And do you remember the the virtue fourteen and fifteen? codes that were based off of the crop circle way back in the emerald covenant templars workshops like where we had the the cover of the crop cir the guardian crop circle it was like the only crop circle that the guardian said that they had uh, assisted with or, oh, mm -hmm. yes. yeah so that's actually showing all the densities too and that's linked to the wheel of freedom where it shows how the metatronic harness actually was successful but it was like years later going into KDDL1 where we kind of reversed the reversals type thing and showed uh, the wheel of freedom and the virtues and everything. And now that we've got this accretion uh, runs of uh, this um, of these different frequencies going and anchoring, I think right now we are in this um, blue yana cycle, if I remember correctly. Um, so so yeah we've got definitely like many kinds of clearings happening um on this on these higher levels and the plasma frequencies i feel like these frequencies are like anchoring all the time in this alhumbra cathedrals uh, and this is all related to the virtues so uh, these accretion cycles are related to how these configurations of this um of the of these vars are going to look like so this is a great mechanics to, to take a look at in the KDDL1. And we're getting our window open also. I think it's called the magic window that's going to make the, the actual... The window. Yes, that's going to make the connection like to, to the bridge home, basically. After we establish that, like make sure it's open. I think that's the next... It's supposed to be the next technique or activation that we get is actually established. She called it like a tractor beam. You know, and you're, you're uh, yes, because I think we yeah we opened it in that uh, latest technique with these foil flicker flames. This in window was called like the window of the first and the last passage. So I feel like we'll make our last passage through that window. Um, and also we've got this connection to this. I think you're talking about this blue te blue lotus petal line, line yeah, connecting yeah. us uh, also to the earth core and to the Andromeda. And, uh, and also to this Ark of the Covenant and the Sphere of Amenti. So again, from the KDDL3, we are coming back to the knowledge from the Voyager. So this is all beautifully interconnected. It's just amazing, you know, that, that the Sphere of Amenti is relocated, Earth of Three, I believe, Andromeda, higher density. So that's, it, things got to that point where it actually had to be relocated. And now we're reestablishing the connection to the Sphere of Amenti through these techniques. So th these are just invaluable techniques that are coming up and activations to, to tune into, for sure. Yes, I, I do believe that we need to be a little bit patient when it comes to the new live streams uh, coming up. Yeah. But I feel like, as always, they will just come up in the right time because people are still uh, learning the KDDL3. There are new people coming up, getting into the workshops. So uh, people keep on, you know, like getting into this frequency, uh, more of the people anchoring this frequency. So I feel like that perhaps there needs to be some kind of a critical mass reached when the new uh, technique will be released. Well, sp speaking of the, there has been talk of like some people being able to access frequencies ahead of time or you know, be more tuned into the incoming activations before they're announced. Have you experienced any of that? What's been your experience with the window opening? Are you experiencing a connection already through the window? Anything like that? So I often uh, see that this window, it kind of starts to like shine. And uh, like this small kind of like a diamond, which is in the center of it, it's like, it kind of opens. And there's this wave of frequency going through my body. And I was also, um, I think that was like four days ago, when I was on a projection to that, I mentioned this rainbow ring transposition platform. And I was in that space already. And I was told that I'm like the second person who was there so far. And it will be slowly getting opened to more people. 
Um, and it's it's wonderful. It's like actually it's the rainbow rings because we've got different spheres of rainbow being there, and it's like you jump through these different rings, and there are different planes of each of these rings. Um, and you're actually catching up different sorts of frequencies from there. So um, so I'm curious if Ashayana will ever lead a projection up there. Uh, however, it's a fascinating place, really. Yeah, there's always a lot more to come, too. It's just that, that feeling with these latest activations, like there's so much more that's going to be following it. So we're wrapping up the interview here. We're coming on about two and a half hours and I've yeah, got just a, time passes so quickly. <laughs> it does. So just a few more questions here. What has been the most challenging part of following the teachings? Uh, so I would say it's mainly the vast amount of knowledge, uh, the relationship to the maths and the physics, um, which was a struggle to me uh, at times. And um, I kind of had to learn that at first my logical mind doesn't need to understand everything. And that I kind of need to feel this knowledge, process it through my body and see if it resonates um, and what I could actually do about it. But I think it's about first feeling it and then kind of understanding. But I think that is the mechanics, especially this crazy Merkaba mechanics that were introduced about um, in the freedom teachings when we started working with these different types of Merkabas such as the Akasha, Triveka Merkaba and such. That's so complex that I'm still kind of <laughs> working on the spins and all of that. Uh, but it's fascinating at the same time because the more you put your effort into it, the more you actually feel like you're getting it. It's very interesting you say that because that's that's been my approach now with the material post-2012 after the split, but it didn't used to be that way. I came in in 2009 and it was just like on autopilot with anything that was coming out with sliders. It was just do it and it was automatic and I knew that I needed to, but now after the split, it's like slow down. I Like I didn't even catch up with the KDVLs till years later. I was still soaking in the Elase and Poles and just really comfortable with Triptolase frequency. And there's all this new plasmas that I needed to kind of catch up on. But it was a real feel thing first. It was like, just pause, just wait, and feel it first. Don't jump into the live stream. Just kind of wait for it to, to absorb through the grids and see what it feels like locally here. So that's interesting. That's a good approach, actually, too. Yeah, it's about trusting this divine timing, knowing what's good for yourself. Absolutely. What has been the most joyful part of studying these teachings? So for me, uh, it has definitely been the journeys, um, the fact that you could experience these other realms and that they bring you this sense of feeling like you're at home, that you're in the right place, that you're having interactions with the guardians um, who are actually like the future versions of you. That's how I look at this way, that they help us because they're like the versions of us from the future so they kind yes. of know what we have to go through and um the most joyful part of the teachings is basically um for me the journeys and experiencing these realities which seem so familiar to me and that they bring me a peace of mind when i think about it that earth no matter what is going on like um in the 3d hologram it's all going to turn out in a good way and that will come back home very soon, in 900 years. 900 years, yeah. Do you think you'll be here for the whole show? Like, are you gonna, are you going for transfiguration, or reincarnating, what are you seeing? Because it's getting to that point to where these are possibilities, you know, that we can talk about if we're working with this stuff and it's really <laughs> working, we're transfiguring, right? Uh, so I feel like um, this is my last uh, incarnation on here. I do believe that uh, I'm following the path of the Trua, of the transfiguration. Okay. That's what I very strongly feel like. These processes in my physical body are supposed to lead me towards um, ascension. Lately, I started to also change my diet habits, started some holistic therapies, which are working very powerfully when it comes to uh, raising my consciousness, but also like aligning not with that, just the spiritual part of me, but also the physical that needs this right care to raise the frequencies enough on this atomic structure 
to be able to fulfill that full uh, transfiguration. What about uh, you? I resonate 100% that on the diet change and stuff that's been so much in my face right now that I can't eat some of the things I used to, even as much. Now, I'm, I've got teenager kids here living with me and their diets are entirely different. I'm just like looking at this like I can't keep up, you know. It's, it's a lot of changes have happened with uh, awareness on the physical level, what you're taking in, energetically, physically, everything. You mentioned the, the connection with the guardians too. I wanted to ask if you've done the floating Buddhist technique that works specifically with guardian lines. Are you familiar with that? Not this one yet. Um, I, I haven't really felt drawn to it yet. Um, mainly because maybe I'm kind of like experiencing my guardians around me all the time. Right. So it's like if I ask them with the intention or the prayer, they just come. So that's yeah. definitely on my list to try these floating Buddhas because I heard a lot about them and I even like have the handbook for it. Uh, but yeah, it's like I have uh, for the past three years, I have felt the guardians very intensively uh, in my space, in my field. So I strongly feel like um, I strongly feel like they are with me whenever I need them. It was back in 2009. You have the handbook. So it was FOL9. And it was also when the indigo contracts had shifted to like the indigo threes upgraded to two. So there was a lot of like upgrading energies that, that were happening. I think they were needing, needing to be more in our reality to kind of assist that to a lot of incoming, a lot of stuff was going on back in 2009 too in the work. And that's when the dark flowering has started. So I guess yeah. it was like an important uh, time for all of the souls to kind of awaken or they might actually get into this fall yeah there was uh, also a lot of orb orb pictures was a big thing back then if you see sliders 10 there's a lot of photos and they would actually pause to take pictures before right when the, the wave was coming and she's like all right if you want to take get some pictures you know <laughs> and you'd see all the cameras snapping and stuff and people got a lot of pictures of the orbs and guardians and stuff so i think there was more of a presence that came in as well it was encouraging to see that definitely mm -hmm. i will take a look at that yeah what has been the most important dream since discovering chaos uh, for me it has been spreading this knowledge uh, to more and more people uh, so they could actually see the value in these teachings uh, so they could start using it to uh, to understand what they came here for and also somehow like using this knowledge to assist others what i have kind of achieved with my uh, with my work as a plasma healer in here so basically uh it was to assist others uh to also um to enable them uh to to, to show them through this uh, you know they have the free will so you show them the knowledge and they decide whether they want to take it or not but whenever i just talk to people and just mention a few things and even if they're not fully conscious of stuff they are always just so fascinated because it's a totally different knowledge and people are just i feel like people are open to hear about this kind of crazy unusual things because um, they are looking for some kind of excitement for some kind of something which will make their lives give their lives a meaning so i feel like these teachings are definitely uh, giving us a meaning. I get the exact same feedback like doing the uber rides with people and just talking about like it always start it's like tears that, that go with it. It starts on a political level locally what what they're doing uh, stuff with COVID and then it'll escalate if people have, have like done research on these subjects and then they're just excited they're like yeah ETs yeah I know that's real I know I'm just in disclosure and what's really going on behind the governments and uh, it just seems like a readiness right now overall, at least in our area. Now, I can't speak for you know other countries or places, but I, I really feel it here in our area. Yes, I feel like people are getting more open-minded these days. They just... Um, I'm not surprised really because I don't watch the news, but if people keep hearing the same things all over again yeah. each day, then Noticeable. they are just wanting some kind of a change. That's for sure. Yeah, it, it's gotten so noticeable. The shift from COVID to the news being about the Ukraine right now, just 
it was like everything just disappeared on the COVID map and people were like, it's still happening. Like people are still getting it. They're not talking about it. Like who's running the movie projector here? You know, it, it, a lot more awareness on, on how we can be directed. Our whole lives can be directed by this. Definitely. So I do believe that we are in this wonderful time of transition, which is just going to, to keep happening and we will be starting to see more and more exposing in our hologram. So, Olivia, any closing thoughts or advice for newcomers, people coming in, of what you're seeing that you can give people? So, I think that uh, when it comes to the teaching, it's, it's, it's very easy to get confused at first with this vast knowledge. Uh, you kind of start to think like how I think I must dedicate my whole life to studying this because the material is so huge. But I think that it's good to take it easy to start with these free techniques, which are on the Arrayas website, so you could connect yourself to the fail-safe host. Um, and then just to follow your own intuition, there are some suggestions. L lately, they have been posted on the Arrayas website, where you've got this um, the, the newcomers section, where there are like the workshop listed. So that's a good place to, to start with, I think. Uh, but basically, try to tune in into your body and see which kind of words kind of start to awaken something in you and try to follow there. Uh, you can also always like ask uh, if you need any sort of advice, but don't get suggested by other people. Always listen to yourself. And, and basically, um, it's a very wonderful journey. Once you start it, you just want to carry on with it. And that's how this beautiful experience on Earth with these magical teachings uh, begins. Excellent advice. Please pronounce your last name for me. Ezayana. Ezayana. Olivia Ezayana, thank you so much for coming on this platform. I want to say that it's an honor to watch people like yourself just fluidly come into their contracts and their calling and what they're here to do. And I can say that with confidence because I've received so much positive feedback from your sessions. It's just amazing. And I can feel it. I feel it off of you talking in the beginning and during the interview that you're running really good frequency with these plasmas. So thank you for your service and please continue to do what you do. Consider coming back another life son, please. <laughs> it, it would be, <laughs> yeah, it would be amazing because I think that, um, you know, I really enjoyed running this wave with you. Um, it's been amazing. Uh, I also felt very wonderful frequency from you. I was very excited for this interview, like Me too. not nervous at all, just excited. So yeah, yeah I think we can do it again it, whenever it resonates. So totally. it was it Thank was like over a week's it was like a week's time and every day I could feel it like just kind of building. I knew it was gonna be an incredible story, incredible share. And for a lot of people just to have awareness of what you're doing as well. So thank you. Thank you. All right, take care, Olivia. Take care. Bye-bye.